Hey everybody, it's Norman Will back for another episode of Behind the Garage Door. Today we're going to head up north, Citrus County, meet up with a guy named Bill and talk about his cool Corvette. Beverly Hills is kind of a far drive and Will likes to nap on long drives, so we're going to take something big and comfy. All right, so we made it out to Beverly Hills. We're here with Bill. Beautiful house, Bill. This is a really neat area of Florida that I've never been to, so thank you so much for inviting us out. We really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Super excited to see what is exactly behind Bill's garage door. First of all, Bill, I have to say, clearly you are a Chevy guy. We got the uh, the the uh, Colorado over here, the Trailblazer in here, and then both Corvettes. So thank you very much for being a, a fan of the bow tie. Yeah, sure. Appreciate that. Let's start with your C7 Corvette. Tell me all about this one. All right, so I, I bought that when I came down here to Florida about a year and a half ago. I realized I live in Florida now, I can drive a Corvette all the time. Yes, you can. <laughs> and that was like my dream Corvette when I was building Corvettes, you know, working for GM using a discount. I was like, if I could build any Corvette, what would it be? And that was it. Well, let's back up a little bit. So you work for GM? Yes, I do. So did. are you retired now or? Well, not retired, just semi-retired. Semi -retired. Okay, so uh, what did you do for GM? Automotive cybersecurity. So I'm the guy that like keeps people from hacking into your cars. Oh. I didn't even, you know, I'm going to be honest, I didn't even know that there was a guy that did internet cyber yeah, there's quite a few cybersecurity yeah. on your vehicle, so your yeah. vehicle can't be hacked into. Yeah. Oh, all right. So this was your dream Corvette that you would have built. So tell me, uh, tell me all about it. What year and everything that's on it? Uh, 2016 C51 package, uh, LT2, and uh, just pretty standard Corvette. Yeah. And that's, is that Corvette racing yellow? Yes, it is. Corvette. Yeah, they started that in 2016. Yeah. That's such a, and with the yellow, or yellow with the black wheels, that's always such a thing. You cannot go wrong with that combination. And this, yeah. I, I love the C7 Vets. They're so fast and just so nice and comfy. And it's got the target top too. Yeah. Top comes out. Yeah, it's got the carbon fiber roof. Something I don't know if I, I would have spent the money on, but it was whoever <laughs> had it. <laughs> And I had to have something to match the floor too. Well, yeah, we well, see here. What am I going to do? I've got this yellow and black floor. I need a yeah. car to go with it. Being, you know, being from Pittsburgh, I had to have something. Uh, you know, okay, all right. Town and Steelers fan. Yeah, <laughs> got to be a Steelers yeah. fan. Okay, so you got your your dream Corvette that you would have built, and then you have the C3 Vet that I want to know all about as well. Now, is this what year is it? So eighty two. So eighty two. So let's start uh, start at the beginning when you found this car. So the car actually found me. Oh, that's the that's the interesting part about this. Uh, kind of the long story was that I was always a Ford guy. If you complete, now I got all Chevys. <laughs> uh, I really working with computers, but I like like cars. I had '85 Corvette just because I saw one at a car show and like, hey, I can afford that. And I had it. Right, right. Fixed it up and everything like that. So, long story short, after like getting into Chevys, I decided maybe I could work for GM doing you know the computer doing stuff. what you do. Yeah, and I and I did and. Uh, when I got up there, I had to use my employee discount. Had to get a, had to get a Camaro lease. So, so what I, Camaro did you get? I got a 2016 uh, Hyper Blue, but also black wheels, uh, V6 Camaro. Nice, so nice. It's a nice commuter car, so yep. I could drive all, all year. Uh -huh. So when the lease was up for that, I decided I, I I need something else. So I made good friends in the Camaro community, and I, I knew someone that had uh, a big collection of cars, and they also owned a dealership at the, at the time. I said, hey, look out for like an 80. 80s Corvette because I want to fix one up again. Okay. And I know that from all the parties they had in their warehouse, they had this, this famous place called, called the Warehouse, uh -huh. uh, they had a collection of newer and older cars, all Chevys of course, uh -huh. and they had this in the back corner and they said, what about the collector's edition? I was like, well, I, I can't afford that car. It was only like 11,000 miles on it and it was in perfect condition. That's, this is a really low mileage car. <laughs> yeah, so, they but they gave me a good deal on, on the car and 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 that was like three years ago so I'm I'm, I'm thinking that like I, I want to drive the car so it's 11,000 miles and hey great but uh, there's a lot of things need to fix it's just been sitting as a museum piece the thing about that car is we, we've had a, a few museum pieces come into the dealership and yeah this we had one that was uh, uh, a 70 was a 76 that was the uh, 
pace car, yeah. the Indy pace car with a silver interior and a black, had had like 1,300 miles on it. And you're thinking, wow, 1,300 miles, it's a brand new car. No, when they sit like that, they deteriorate. They have to be driven. Yeah, the first problem was original tires, so like a 30 mile drive home, the car is pulling hard, really hard to the left. Like I'm taking my hand off the steering wheel, it can go around bends. I'm like, oh, I guess I need alignment. Then I got out and noticed the tires weren't circles anymore, they're ovals. Oh yeah. So I got lucky. Oh wow. Fixed that and then the next thing was, uh, was the uh, heater core. Uh, it took my wife uh, like a week later, like e Easter afternoon, and yeah. my feet are wet. So <laughs> heater core went. So, Old car problems. Yeah, especially it was, when it was they're just sad. those things. And then, one, I noticed that all the bushings were bad, so one is the heater core, so it's on, and those type of things, and it's just one, th one little thing after another. But then 2020 came along. Uh, a friend that I bought this car from, she came down with cancer. Uh -huh. So the Camaro, Camaro community had a, a big parades, prayed for her, like right in front of her house so they could, you know, kind of wish, wish her well and everything yeah, like yeah. that. And I brought the car up. This was when I got the heater core fixed and I still had some work in the suspension to do and all those things. And I remember just seeing the, the look on her face. And it was just like, you know, she was just so happy to see the car. Oh, that's cool. And I fixed the paint up and everything yeah. like that. And, and she passed away a month later. Oh. So. Well, that kind of like spurred me on. I'm just like, I'm going to turn this into a driver car. Yeah. So I, I rebuilt the front suspension, rebuilt the back suspension, fuel injection system, pretty much almost everything I, I could to make this a real driver. So it's right like it was 1982 off the, off the show. It's before. beautiful. I mean, it has survived very, very well. It, it, the paint looks great. The wheels look great. The interior looks great. Now, it's a 350 Crossfire injection, That's right? That's correct. For people that don't know what the Crossfire injection is, explain that. So it's probably the first uh, electronic fuel injection that GM did. Was it actually throttle bodies or carburetors? Two throttle bodies. Okay. And they were they looked like carburetors. They actually took the manifold from a 60s uh, a muscle car with a two four barrels and put these fuel injectors on there. It gets a kind of a bad reputation. That was one of the things I was concerned about. It's like, I don't really want to crossfire because yeah. of everything I heard, but it's really not so bad. It's once you understand what's going on, it's actually pretty easy system. Easy system it's a neat looking setup too. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's a really, really neat looking setup. So this is a collector's edition, not an anniversary edition. Right, that's the collector's what, edition. What what's what made it a collector's edition? The special gold color, the special wheels, and it has a few other options like uh, I think had like um like cruise control and those type of things they had there. Whoever ordered this car, someone from Massachusetts, had everything but the heavy duty cooling system and the C B. It was kind of cool. It's like so it's, it was a heavily ordered, yeah, lot of options. Right. Yeah. So, so they put, didn't put the big radiator in it, and they didn't opt for the CB. Yeah. Dummy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The CB went pretty cool, but uh, at least the tape player got that working again. Is it a track or a cassette? It's a cassette. Nice. And I, I had all my old cassettes, and I can still play them, which is kind of fun. That is cool. So it's a T-top car as well. Yeah, T-top. And the one unique thing about this collector's edition is the hatch opens. That was something that I, I can't believe that they never the had. The rear glass? It. Yeah. It oh, was, like, yeah. I can see the... Uh, the things that thought to hold it up. Since this being my first C3, I couldn't imagine a C3 without that because it's so hard to get to everything in the back. But this is pop, pop the, the hatch and get to everything. That's such a, such a neat car. All right, Bill. So you said that you wanted to make it a driver and you've done the suspension, you've done the tires, you've fixed the paint and you've done all the things to do that. So you had 11,000 miles on it when you got it. How many miles are on it now? I put about 2,000 miles on it. Okay. So I'm hoping to put a lot more down here in Florida. When you get it out and drive it, I mean, what, what's your what's your what's your your goal to go to? Do you you and your wife go get ice cream? Do you go out to dinner? Do you go to car shows? What do you do? Yeah, probably all of the above. Not so much in car shows. They're just like driving it. I like going to car shows to see other cars. And I'm usually there for just a couple of minutes, yeah, and, and I'm done, and I yeah. leave. I, I don't like to sit around sit around all day. Now we have a a, a community of people down in the uh, in the Tampa Plant City Lakeland area that we do uh, uh, cars and coffee. Uh, one one Saturday a month. Is there any cars and coffee events like that up here? Yeah. Okay. Those I like a lot because yeah. you get up, you're up early, you go see your buddies, you talk to them for a while, you check out some cool cars and you're home by 10 o'clock. Yeah. So th that's always my suggestion to anybody in the car community. But when I was walking around the back of the car, there's like four holes or grommets in the back of it. What are those for? That's for the V54 op panel holder option. V54 panel yeah. option. Yeah. Panel for the T-tops? For the T-tops. You can actually strap on the back. I didn't have the actual 
pieces when I bought the car from Auto go on eBay and find them, and they were almost impossible to find. So I actually have the actual panel the carrier, but I don't have the straps to put in. So there's no way to drive without them. Oh, okay. So instead of taking the tops off and just laying them in back, back behind, they're on the back of the, the car. So. I have never seen that done. I didn't yeah. even know that that was even an option. Yeah, it, now with the replacement cost of of the glass uh, T tops, I don't think I'd actually drive with it. But it's kind of cool looking to have them back there. That's that's. <laughs> I've never I've never heard of that option, never seen it. That is that is really, really cool. Bill, thank you so much for inviting us out to your house, Welcome. sharing both of your Corvettes and all your Chevys with us. We really uh we really appreciate it. Beverly Hills, Florida is where we're at. And this is Bill C3, C7, his Colorado, his Trailblazer, Chevy guy through and through. We're gonna head back to the dealership and wrap it up. All right, made it back, long drive back. In case you didn't know, Florida also has a Beverly Hills and a Hollywood. They're just not next door to each other like in California. One's on the West Coast, one's on the East Coast. Bill, thank you so much for inviting us up to your house, sharing that super, super clean collector's edition 82 Corvette. Don't know that I've ever seen one that pristine and that nice. So make sure you're here next Thursday as we do up another episode of Behind the Garage Door. Sting.